I discovered aging biology actually completely by chance. I was trying to understand the rate of expansion of the universe, the Hubble constant, and I realized that the time scale for that kind of research was decades, if not if not longer. And that in order to contribute to some of these big questions, you need a lot of time. Before I was a research biologist, I was actually interested in public health and in government policy. It was kind of through the work that I did in public health that I first stumbled upon aging as this really big, unexplored area of need. I think the majority of the population can probably relate to the feeling of wanting to see your parents and your grandparents and the rest of your family live healthier and without disease. I think that when it comes to aging, there's so many different approaches that you can take, both including understanding why aging occurs and understanding how aging occurs. It's this phenomenon that every single person and being experiences. It's universal. Everybody ages. It's not an entity that is unique to a small subset of people. When I think of aging biology, I think of what it means in the physiological sense. Aging biology is very elegant as a theory. It presumes that you could target neurodegenerative disorders and other aging diseases by targeting a root cause. You know, I understand it as this whole suite of biological processes that lead to the gradual degradation of function. I would define the goal of the field as adding healthy years to life. I think that's part of why I care so much about aging. I don't want to have limitations because of my biological body. I want my mind to be good, I want my body to be good, and I want to be able to do the things that I love, regardless of how many years I've been in this earth. A healthy life is one that isn't restricted by the fear of aging and the fear of health deterioration. The more we can get down to what the brass tacks of how our bodies work, to me it feels like it might offer up a better understanding of how we age as a whole. I think we're really reaching a, a tipping point. I think within 20 years we'll see a breakthrough. If there is a lot more push for aging research, if a lot more people get involved, if we have more projects come up, things can always advance faster. I don't really know how I want to be involved in this field yet, but there's a lot of creation and innovation that is coming in the aging field, and I really do see myself in it for the long term. Now, in the 21st century, we have the proper tools and questions to ask that can really get into the nitty-gritty of how to give people healthier and happier lives. The Time Initiative is touring college campuses to cultivate a community of the next generation of leaders in aging biology. If any of these stories have sparked your interest, we urge you to apply for our fellowship program, where we nurture passionate and talented students with the knowledge, resources, and mentors to create a world where we can all have more healthy time. To learn more, visit timeinitiative.org. And last but not least, we want to hear from you. If advances in aging research gave you extra healthy years, how would you spend that time? Let us know in the comments.